To solve a rational inequality, we first write the expression on the left side of the inequality written as a single fraction. Step two, find the zeros by setting the numerator equal to zero and solving. Next, find vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving. Step four, we use the zeros and vertical asymptotes as boundary points to separate the number line into intervals. Finally, we pick test points in each interval. Intervals that are true are part of the solution. In this first example, step one is done for us. Notice the left side has a single fraction and the right side is zero. We next can find the x-intercepts, also known as zeros. We do that by setting the numerator equal to zero and solving. Take the square root of both sides, x plus five equals zero, then subtract five on both sides and x is negative 5. Next we'll find vertical asymptotes. To do that we set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. Add 4 to both sides and then square root both sides. x is plus or minus 2. These values we will call boundary points. We'll put those boundary points on a number line make sure you put those boundary points in order. We have negative 5, negative 2, and positive 2. Notice that the boundary points break up the number line into four different intervals in this particular case. We want to choose a test point within each interval and plug it into the original inequality to see if it's true or false. In the first interval, let's pick a number smaller than negative five, say negative six. So let's test negative six in the original inequality. We're asking, is this greater than or equal to zero? In this case, we get one over 32 is greater than or equal to zero, which is true. So we'll make a note that that first interval is good. Up next, we need to pick a number between negative five and negative two. I'm gonna choose negative three. Again, we'll plug that value into the inequality. And again, we're asking, is that greater than or equal to zero? This time we get 4 fifths is greater than or equal to 0, which is true. In the third interval, between negative 2 and positive 2, we can pick 0 and plug it in. 0 plus 5 squared divided by 0 squared minus 4. And again, we're asking, is that greater than or equal to 0? We get negative 25 fourths which is not greater than or equal to zero. So we'll make a note that that third interval is no good. Finally, we need to pick a number that is bigger than two. Let's try positive three. Three plus five squared over three squared minus four. Is that greater than or equal to zero? We get 64 fifths which is definitely bigger than zero. So we'll keep that final interval since it's true. The solution is the three intervals, in this case, that work. We'll write our answer in interval notation. Up first, notice that these two intervals are beside each other. So maybe we can combine them. The question is, can we include the negative five in order to combine the two intervals around negative five? Looking at the original inequality, we have equal to, which means maybe we can include the negative five. The next thing you have to ask is, is negative five a zero or a vertical asymptote? In this case, it's a zero, an x-intercept, which means we can include it. So since we can include the negative five, we'll join these two intervals into a single interval. 
that being negative infinity up to negative 2. Now we have to ask, can we include the negative 2? Again, we have equality, but negative 2 is not a 0. It's not an x-intercept. It's a vertical asymptote. So we can't include it. Even though we have equality, we cannot include the negative 2 because it's an asymptote. So we will use a parenthesis here, not a bracket. And then we'll use a union to join that to the other interval that is true, 2 to positive infinity. Again, we have to ask ourselves, can you include the 2? We have equality, but 2 is a vertical asymptote. It cannot be included. So we will use a parenthesis, 2 to infinity. And we have our solution. In this example, we first want to get a single fraction on the left side. So we'll start by subtracting 3 over x plus 1 to both sides. That will make the right side 0. But we now need a single fraction. To combine fractions, we need an LCD. In this case, x minus 3 times x plus 1. The original numerator in the first fraction is 5. To get the equivalent numerator with our new fraction, we need to multiply that 5 by x plus 1. The original numerator in the second fraction is minus 3. To get the equivalent numerator, we need to multiply that by x minus 3. Now simplifying the numerator, we get 2x plus 14, and we'll leave the denominator in factored form. Now we have a single fraction on the left, and the right side is 0. From here, we can find the zeros, or x-intercepts. To find zeros, we set the numerator equal to zero and solve. Subtracting 14 and then dividing by 2, we get x is negative 7. We also need to find the vertical asymptotes. To do that, we set the denominator equal to zero. Set each of these factors equal to zero and solve those independently. We get x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. These are the boundary points that we will place on a number line. Make sure we put those in order. We have negative 7, negative 1, and 3. Notice in this particular example, the boundary points break up the number line into four separate intervals. We need to choose a test point within each interval and plug it into the inequality to see if the interval is true or false. Up first, let's pick a number smaller than negative 7, for example, negative 8. Let's test negative 8. We can test it in the original inequality, or we can come down here to this fraction, and it might be easier to test it here, because then all we're asking is, is it bigger than zero? So two times negative eight all over negative eight minus three times negative eight plus one, and we're asking, is that greater than or equal to zero. We get negative 16 over 77 is greater than or equal to, to zero. That is not true. Up next, we have something between negative seven and negative one. I'm gonna choose negative two. Again, plugging it in, we get two times negative two plus 14 all over negative 2 minus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. And we're asking, is that greater than or equal to 0? Here we get 2 is greater than or equal to 0, which is true. 
in the third interval, we can choose zero and test it. Two times zero plus 14 divided by zero minus three times zero plus one. Is it greater than or equal to zero? Here we get negative 14 thirds is greater than or equal to zero. That's false. And finally, the last interval, let's test the number four. Two times four plus 14 divided by four minus three times four plus one. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Here we get 22 fifths, which is greater than or equal to zero. So the solution set will be the intervals that are true. We have this second interval between negative seven and negative one. So we have to question now, do we include the negative seven or the negative one? Looking at the original inequality, we do have equal to in it. So we can include zeros because they're x-intercepts, but we cannot include vertical asymptotes. The negative seven is a zero, which means we can include it. We'll bracket that. And then going up to negative one, negative seven to negative one, can we include the negative one? Notice negative one is an asymptote. We can't include it. So negative one will get a parenthesis. Then we'll union that with three to infinity. Again, we have to ask ourselves, can we include the three? We have equality, but three is a vertical asymptote, so it is a parenthesis. Then infinity always gets a parenthesis. And we have our solution set.